Japanese cinema has a long tradition regarding expressing concerns for the demise of the family structure. Before the war, films often blamed this on Japan's urbanisation and external economic changes. After the war, however, the children were viewed as the issue, who rebelled against their caring and devoted parents. But approaching towards and after the millennium, the collapse of the family has been blamed on the father, or the white-collared salaryman who became synonymous with masculinity in Japan and was represented as being negligent and irresponsible. Mikei Takashi's Visitor Q is possibly the most symbolically heavy-handed example of this. The film depicts a mysterious stranger's influence on an incredibly disturbed family made up of a soon-to-be unemployed journalist father, a sex worker daughter, a violently bullied son, and a mother who's a drug addict, a sex worker, and suffers from her son taking his abuse out on her. The film emphasises the father's inadequacies in many ways, and indicates this to be the root cause of the family's decline. Even the opening shows the father paying his daughter for sex, only to ejaculate prematurely. The daughter mocks him, expressing his humiliation not only as a father, but as a man. A nod to how in Japanese history, fatherhood and masculinity can be interrelated. Instead of communicating with his suffering family, the father only communicates with his video camera, speaking to it as if he's addressing an abstract audience. Even when his son's bullies vandalise their house, he simply videos it for his project on contemporary youth, hoping it will safeguard his job. This notion of associating the values of fatherhood with humiliation is epitomised when he watches footage of him interviewing some young people, who resort to stripping him down and abusing him on camera, which we find out was actually aired during a news broadcast. According to Timothy Isles, the film aims, as the stranger does to the father, to strike the spectator in the head to awaken them from the absurdity inherent within the structure of the contemporary family, a structure the film suggests is collapsing under the weight of its own shortcomings, and specifically, their lack of communication. It's when sex transcends beyond the physical act itself and becomes that of sexuality that we see self-discovery and effective communication develop. The father acknowledges his sexual dysfunction, which eventually leads to a resurrection of his sexual ability, and thus, him being able to connect physically and emotionally with his wife. After this sexual transformation, he goes from predominantly addressing his camera to openly expressing himself to his wife. This restored physical masculinity allows him to finally accept his responsibilities within the family, and even defend his son from his bullies, to whom both the father and mother murder together adopting their role as the family's protectors. Before every other family member can discover their happiness within the domestic structure, the father must find his first, then the mother, and then the children follow. For such an obscenely taboo film, it has a surprisingly conservative core. And as problematic as these patriarchal assignments to the family structure can be, there is no denying how unconventionally effective Visitor Q is at expressing them.